All right, guys, we got an eel in this pocket of water. There it is, it's coming around here. Got yeah! It. Woo! Yes! Whoa! Oh, no! No! He's still up, he's still up. Oh, there he is. Right here, right here. As the sun sets upon the wild lands of Australia, a world of elusive creatures slowly emerge from the shadows. And while most people strive to avoid stumbling upon situations that may involve such nightmares, the Brave Wilderness crew is exactly the opposite. Well guys, as you can tell from the lack of light, it is nighttime. But the good news is that tonight we're headed out to search for some epic creatures. I've got my flashlight and this giant net. You may be thinking to yourselves, Coyote, are you in Costa Rica heading back out after that giant freshwater prawn that got away from you? No, no, we're in Queensland, Australia, and I've got one target species in mind, the Australian long-finned eel. Mark, hop on off that platform there and into the water. Come on on, buddy, Ooh, the water's boy, nice. It's cold. Yeah, right. the water is cold, but that is perfect for finding these freshwater eels. So if you guys are ready, let's head upstream and see if we can catch one. All right, guys, we're gonna head up to the embankment because these eels are actually very sensitive to light and sound. So the quieter we can be, the better chance we have of actually finding one. So what we wanna do is get up on the shoreline, move slowly, and periodically peer down into the water to see if we can find an eel. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be a lot easier to maneuver on land because these rocks are incredibly slippery. The last thing we want is for you guys to twist an ankle. All right, follow me. You know what I love about this? The cooler temperature means no mosquitoes. And actually, we haven't come across any mosquitoes yet in Australia, which has been really nice to work. Uh, I've been bit a few times. You've been bitten? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. I have not even seen a mosquito yet. Yeah, but you have that thing where mosquitoes don't bite you. This is true, guys. I'm not oftentimes, actually, I just saw a mosquito fly right past the lens of the camera there. I'm oftentimes not bitten by mosquitoes, and even when I am bitten, I have no reaction. So I kind of luck out in that instance. Mark, you're usually eaten alive, aren't you? Yeah, unfortunately. Traveling upstream under the darkness of night was perilous, especially for a camera team. Slippery rocks, deep drop-offs, ah, and strong currents meant every step of the adventure was riddled with environmental obstacles. The search for eels and their cryptic nature is one of time and patience. These slime-covered creatures stay fairly nomadic, especially during times of rain and rising water levels. So finding one usually happens when you are in the right place at exactly the right time, which meant that I was always ready to spring into action. Okay, can you up, up straight here? Right up. Oh, I see it, I see it, I see it. Got it, swim right into the net. Yes. Look at that. Woo. Wow, how about that for a tactic? Yeah. Stay completely still awesome. and let the eel swim into your net. Wow, and that is considered a small one and it's about a foot and a half in length. Okay, let's bring it up to the edge of this embankment and take a quick look at it. We definitely have to catch something bigger, but any eel is worth taking a look at. Let me see, I'm gonna just Woo! It is strong, it is slippery. Now they can give you a pretty nasty bite, so I gotta be careful here. Oh, they have teeth. They do have teeth. Wow, look at that, look at that. It's just all over the place. Let me see if I can get it with two hands here. Come here, buddy. There, there's, there's absolutely no way to hold onto this creature. It is like a slippery water balloon. Actually, I have a pair of gloves in my pack. Let me take those out. There's no way I can hold on to that eel. I can't even get it out of the net. Give me two seconds here. Oh, trying to get out of the net there. I see you, get my glove on, get my glove on. There we go. Okay, holding onto it with a glove is definitely much easier. And there you have it, folks. That is the Australian long-finned eel. Look at the underside is completely cream-colored and it camouflages perfectly 
into this environment. There's absolutely no good way to hold on to this creature. And honestly, one that's bigger may be easier to manipulate. Beautiful animal. All right, well, like I said, guys, this is a small one. We need to get something much larger in front of the cameras. Okay, I'm gonna gently set it down here into the shallows. And there it goes. All right, guys, so far we are one for one when it comes to catching eels. And look at my gloves. They are completely coated in a thick layer of mucus. I feel like I've got ectoplasm on me from the Ghostbusters, like I've just been slimed by Slimer. Let me wash some of this off. <laughs> I think these, uh, are gonna be the last time these gloves are used is gonna be for this expedition. All right, let's keep moving. I consider the long-finned eel to be a quintessential river monster. And I knew that for this animal to live up to that iconic reputation, we needed an indisputable giant. Deeper into the night we ventured, flashlight beams scanning the water's surface as our eyes peered through the rippling current, hoping to spot the slithering shadow of a giant eel. All right, guys, we've got an eel in this pocket of water. It is moving water, though. This is going to be a difficult catch. Are you guys hot on cameras? Yes. Right here, right here. It's starting around. Okay. This pocket. Man, it is hard to see. Oh, this could be a tough there catch, guys. Right there, right there, right there. I see it, I see it. It's right on the other side of this rock. It's going under there. I see it, I see it. I'm waiting for it to come back underneath these rocks. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Oh. I missed it, I missed it. Where'd it go? It's right by my foot, right by my foot. Here it comes, here it comes. It's going harder than that. Oh, I missed no, it. No, no, no. Where'd he go? He's right in his rocks here somewhere. He might have gone down this edge of the creek though. Hold on. I'll see it. Hold on, hold tight. Stay in that pool. Let me look in these rocks. If anything he came down into this next pool. All right, he's in the current. Move down this way. The dizzying search carried on for what seemed like miles and miles of river as we continued to battle the onslaught of environmental obstacles. Then when it seemed as if our chances of spotting and catching a giant eel had disappeared into the night, my moment of anticipated triumph materialized from the shadows. Right on my foot, right on my foot, hold on. There it is, coming around here. Coming around here. We'll just jet it up. It's on land. Yes! Wow! Up on land! That was a dangerous maneuver. I almost slipped, but it went right into the net! Can you believe that? Okay, let's go back here on this flat land. Man, flat land. that is an awesome eel! Whoa! It is slippery, guys. Be careful. Back here. Back here? Okay, yeah. this is perfect. Woo! Yes! We got one! <laughs> wow! Alright, this is good. Dude! We got one. That was a long, long time coming, man. Now, let me take my pack off for this. <laughs> oh, buddy. Wow. That is a three hour expedition turned in with success. Let me introduce you to the Australian long finned eel. There it is. Come here, buddy. Incredibly difficult to hold on to. Whoa. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh. Did you get it? No! Be careful. He's still up. He's still up. He's still oh, up. Here he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes! Yeah. Yes! Redemption! Redemption! You guys might remember the time that the giant freshwater prawn slipped from my hands and got back into the river. Not happening tonight with the giant long finned eel. Okay, let's back up a little bit further away from the water. Clearly, they are too slippery to hold. Your knee okay? Yeah. Woo! Okay. I promised I, I it was, was gonna get exciting. I was just about to say, man, I had a flashback. Oh, it's to getting the away again. It's gonna get away again. No. <laughs> it's getting away. Hold on, I gotta get it in the net. 
Put it in that net. Just why don't, why don't you just pick that up? Pick that whole thing yeah, up. Get, okay. Rinse, rinse it off. Rinse time it out. Off. Time out. Keep it up. No need to put it down. <laughs> this isn't funny anymore. It's pretty funny actually. <laughs> All right, let's, let's back all the way back. All yeah. the way back. Yeah. Now, Coyote, just to be clear, these eels can be on land for quite a while. Yes. All right, let's crouch down to get this under control finally. I'm going to keep the net upright like this. I fear not, these eels can stay out of water for a substantial amount of time. In fact, hours upon hours, because if they become stranded in a pocket and they want to move to a body of larger water, they can actually crawl over land. And as you saw, it shot up out of the river onto land to make an escape, they are extremely quick. Okay, I need to rethink this situation so that I can actually get it out of the net and that you guys can see it. All right, look, it's staying still now. I'm gonna gently set that down. Okay, now I do wanna get it up out of the net so you guys can get a good look at it. I'm trying to just let it get acclimated and get calm. And actually, one thing that we can look at first without me actually picking it up is where it gets its name. The Australian long-finned eel. Look at this dorsal fin that runs along the length of its body. I'm gonna very gently, Mario, you got an okay shot there? I'm gonna gently just sort of peel that fin up. Can you see that? Oh yeah. yeah. That is where the name long-finned eel comes from. Now there, there is a short-finned eel also here in Australia. They are quite a bit smaller than this variety. And it is that long dorsal fin that easily distinguishes it from the short fin variety. Now, these creatures are most active at night, out right now hunting, and they are voracious predators. All right, come here, buddy. Let me hold you up just a bit. I'm gonna try to get a good hold on it. They are all muscle, very powerful. And what they're feasting on is small fish invertebrates. They will even take things like frogs and snakes if they can catch them. And an eel of this size is about halfway to what they can ultimately turn into. And at a maximum length, they can reach close to 10 feet in length and weigh about 50 pounds. Now here's something really interesting about the life cycle of this animal. It's almost opposite that of a salmon. So you know that salmon swim out of the ocean and upriver to do their spawning. These creatures actually swim out of the rivers and creeks and back into the ocean where they do their breeding. Now, once they have bred and the smaller ones are born, they are actually called elvers. Yeah, kind of like an elf. An elver will then swim back into the creek system where they will spend several years growing to about this size. And like I said, this is about medium. They can grow to be about six feet in length in the river systems and it's really the ones that become marooned in pockets of water that they can't escape from that grow to that maximum length of around 10 feet and 50 pounds. Wow. That's a very healthy eel. That is a very healthy eel. And you can see there are two little sensory organs right on the front of its face there. Almost look like the barbels on the front of a catfish. And they use that to sense their environment, vibrations beneath the water surface, and that helps them detect their prey. Now they have the opportunity to be ambush predators or nomadic predators. And an ambush predator is something that waits for its prey to come to it. But based on the strength and speed of this creature, they can easily chase after something like a freshwater prawn or a fish. And you'll notice that coloration, that speckling, green and black, drab olive, allows it to stay perfectly camouflaged within the shadows, the algae, and amongst the rock structures here in the river. Oh yeah, you're trying to make a run for it. Wow, and it is taking all of my strength right now to hold this eel still. Wow, it is so powerful. You see that twisting move that it's making there? It's just trying to get itself out of my hands and back into the river. Woo! All right, let me set it down in the net there for a second. Oh, look at all that mucus coating my gloves. Now, you get a good shot of the tail there. It's like a big oar. 
and that's what allows these creatures to quickly propel their bodies forward in the water. And they can move downstream or upstream, and they can perfectly maneuver their bodies and manipulate them around the rocks to fit into small crevices. And like I said earlier, up underneath embankments and beneath flat rocks is where they will hide during the day. Again, this is primarily a nocturnal creature. And sure enough, it took us being out here for three hours before we finally came across one that was of decent size to get in front of the cameras. <sighs> well, a little bit of patience and a lot of persistence, but it finally paid off as we got the Australian long-finned eel up close for the cameras. And what a catch that was. An initial catch, it got out of the net, and then I got it a second time. Redemption has been had for the giant freshwater prawn. Guys, this may have been one of the most epic catches we have ever had. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, buddy. Now we can get you back into the river. Great triumphs often come as a result of unwavering determination. And when I finally managed to get the long-finned eel in front of the cameras, without it slipping through my fingers, I felt an incredible sense of accomplishment. In the end, as I gently submerged this river monster back into the murky water and watched as it disappeared into the night, I was truly grateful for the journey we had embarked upon and the reward that became this episode on the Brave Wilderness Channel. If you thought my acrobatics to catch an eel were entertaining, make sure to go back and watch the famous episode about the giant prawn that slipped right through my fingers. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. Did you just... Well, that did not just happen. <laughs>